Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge and welcome back to the Guild 3. So yes, we are back with the Guild 3 because do you know what, it's been quite a while. It's been just short of a couple of years since we last played some Guild 3. If you can believe that, a couple of years, my goodness me, time has flown by. So I thought we should pop back into it just to see what's changed because it has been updated quite a bit since we last played it. I mean the fundamentals of the game are still there, so you know, we have our dynasty and our characters and we own businesses, all that should be familiar, but there have been some big changes to how the markets work and also some fairly big changes to how the enemy dynasties do their thing because previously the enemy dynasties didn't really do very much at all they were just sort of there pottering about in the background doing their own thing but now they play a much larger role in the game apparently plus you can now see inside buildings which was a big thing missing from the guild 3 that was in previous guild games so that's quite nice it makes things a little bit more immersive i suppose so we can see our characters going into things like homes and shops and churches and all that kind of stuff. So with all these changes in place, I thought it was about time to revisit the game and have another go with a whole new dynasty. Now we have had the Guild 3 on the channel quite a few times now, but if you haven't seen it, then the Guild 3 is essentially a medieval life simulator. We have a character in a medieval town and they go and live their medieval life, I suppose. They work, they talk, they fight, they fall in love, they have a family, they have businesses that make money. In a way, it's a bit like The Sims, I suppose, but The Sims in medieval times. So, you know, with more plague and less pizza deliveries, and the idea is that from our starting character, we create a dynasty that starts off at the very bottom rung of the society ladder. We start off, you know, proper peasanty, and then through hard work and money and earning reputation, our dynasty works its way up to the very top of that society ladder. So on the channel in the past, we've had the Cupboard Dynasty in London, the Cup of Tea Dynasty in Paris, and the Piece of Cake Dynasty in Magdeburg. So let's go and find out where our Guild 3 journey is going to take place this time around. So there are quite a lot of different towns to choose from now when starting a new game of the Guild 3, and I am pretty sure that this list is a little bit bigger than when we last played the Guild 3. There are more options on here, I am pretty sure, which is a good thing, you know, it shows that the devs are taking care of things, are adding more maps, more choice, all that kind of stuff, which I like, you know, more choice is better than no choice at all, I suppose. So I've had a little look through all of these maps just to see which ones might be the most interesting, or that have got different features, or might be very pretty to look at or whatever, and there are some really really good maps i mean the prague map is wonderful that is a very very good map i do like the prague map it's a very big map but it looks wonderful it's got a great big castle on it and it just looks like this great big kind of huge sprawling ye olde medieval town it looks very very good indeed and for a while i did think that that's where we were going to play our game this time around but no something else kind of popped up and piqued my interest a little bit more than the prague map but yeah it's really good it's a close second shall we say and kind of in a close third i suppose is the Warsaw map. That's another very good map. Again, it's quite big. It looks really pretty. It's really green. There's lots of green and grass and trees all over the place. It looks very, very nice indeed. It looks like a lovely map indeed. But again, we're not going to play there because something else I think might just be a little bit more interesting. So this time round, our Guild 3 story is going to take place in Visby, right at the bottom of the list, all the way down here. So there we go. We're going to set up shop in Visby and see how we get on. And I went to look at the map and it's really interesting. It's a really interesting map. And then I kind of went, yeah, I think we should uh, you know, play our game in Visby. Where is Visby? I know nothing about Visby. Sorry, people of Visby. So I did a spot of Googling. And then, um, yeah, Visby is a town on the island of Gotland in present-day Sweden. It's sort of toward the southeast of Sweden, if you like. It's out in the Baltic Sea. But it's an island. So because it's an island, we have that very interesting kind of mechanic in the Guild 3 where we don't have land kind of connections to do foreign trade. Because a lot of the other places, in fact, probably pretty much all of them, have um, have little sort of land connections. You go to the edge of the map, in the mountains, there's kind of like a tunnel type thing. And then you can send your people over there and they can take goods to far away lands and do foreign trade and bring back a load of money. But because Visby is an island, we don't have those land connections. So all of the kind of foreign trade stuff goes via the port, which is interesting. And I like that idea. I think it sounds very nice. It makes the map a little bit sort of unique and a bit different to all the others. And it looks really good as well. It looks very, very lovely, particularly the kind of harbour bit. You kind of get a sneak peek of it there. But the harbour bit on the Visby map does look very nice indeed. So yeah, that's what we're going to set up. I thought that Visby sounded interesting. So there we go. We're going to set up shop in Visby. Now, in terms of our game settings, I think what we should do is take the number of enemy dynasties down from the default eight to six. I think that's a more manageable number, particularly now that the enemy dynasties actually get more involved in the game. So if, for example, we had eight enemy dynasties and they all didn't like us, 
We could spend quite a lot of our time just you know, fending them off, trying to fight them away, or put out the fires they've started in our buildings or whatever, and it might be a little bit kind of busy dealing with the other dynasties rather than trying to concentrate on our own stuff. So I think if we bring that down to six, that makes things a little bit more manageable. Difficulty level we'll leave on normal. Years per round, I think we'll leave on two. I like that sort of number. It seems pretty balanced. I mean, four years per round, it goes by too quick. So you don't really get a feel for your characters because you can't get too much done because, you know, people don't live that long in this time period. It's ye olde medieval times. And so having the characters grow sort of four years at a time, four years per every sort of day in the game, if you like, that moves things on too quick. And then on the flip side, sort of one year per round is a little bit too slow. Things move too slowly and you don't get the feel of dynasty because you know, your characters that you're with can do most of the stuff you need. So I think two years is a good balance. Um, game mode we will leave as poor fellow because that's, you know, that's the proper peasanty tale. You start off as nobody and you work your way up from nothing. And career mode does mean you're a citizen. So yeah, you've kind of got a name for yourself and a fancy house and such like, and we don't want that. So let's go for the proper poor fellow peasanty tale. And the campaign, as we've done with all the other ones, we'll put it onto free game because I like the idea of that. We can just do what we like. I mean, really, the ultimate goal is for somebody from our dynasty to become the sovereign of Visby, to rule over Visby. But um, yeah, we might just want to do something else as well. We might want to have extra goals at the end there. So we might become a sovereign, but then we might want to go and do something else. So a free game lets us do that. So there we go. I think that looks about right. I like the look of that. So yeah, now we know where we're playing. I think we need to find out who we're playing. So everybody, please welcome Ulrika Biscuits. Hello, Ulrika. How are you? So of course, Ulrika here is going to become the founding member of the Biscuits dynasty. And I kind of felt like we needed the Biscuits dynasty in here just to complete our afternoon tea themed kind of dynasty names that we've been going for in the Guild 3 that we've played so far on the channel. Because of course, we started with Bernard Cupboard. And the cupboard, of course, is where you would keep all the things that you need to serve an afternoon tea. So, you know, plates and teapots and cups and all that kind of stuff. And then we moved on to Claude Cup of Tea, obviously providing the cup of teas that you need for an afternoon tea. Then we played as Gunter Piece of Cake, because an afternoon tea is nothing without pieces of cake. And then, of course, now we're moving on to biscuits, because you might want a piece of cake. You might want a nice biscuit to dunk into your tea as well. So that's why we've gone on to biscuits. We've kind of got a weird kind of theme going on. And by the way, we're talking about the British definition of biscuits, you know, the one true definition of biscuits, not what other places around the world might call a biscuit. We're talking proper biscuits. Do you know what I'll do? On the screen, I will put up pictures of proper biscuits. So things like digestives and custard creams and other things like that, delicious things, chocolate hobnobs, proper actual biscuits, not what other places around the world might refer to as biscuits because they're wrong. These are biscuits. That's what we've got here. So yeah, expect a lot of kind of biscuit themed names coming up when the dynasty expands at some point in the future. So now we need to pick Ulrika's religion. And this is a new thing that wasn't in the game last time we played. So you can choose to be either a Catholic, a secular Christian or a Protestant Christian. Christian. Now, what I don't know is, I don't really know what effect this has on the game. I don't know if you're a Catholic and you're trying to deal with a Protestant, does that mean that your interactions are, I don't know, 50% more difficult to achieve, 25% more difficult? Are they impossible? I don't really know. I'm not entirely sure of the impact of religion on the game. So with that in mind, we're going to go right down the middle here. We're going to have Ulrika be a secular Christian. So she believes in God, but she follows a more secular way of faith. And they try not to interfere in the struggles between the Catholics and the Protestants. So we're going to sit back and just watch the Catholics and the Protestants having a squabble. And we're just going to go on our way and do some, you know, secular Christianing. And it's going to be fine. So I think that's what we'll do. So there you go, Ulrika. You can become a secular Christian. And now we need to pick Ulrika's profession. And this is very exciting because when we last played the Guild 3, there were four jobs you could start with. You could start as a farmer, a craftsman, a herbalist, or a rogue. But now look, now there are 12 different job types you can begin with, which is all very good indeed. So we've got a farmer, but we're not going to do that because Bernard Cupboard did that. So we're not going to go back and do that. Uh, then we've got an orchardist. Go and pick some fruit and keep some bees. Sounds quite nice. There's a fisherman. We've got crude craftsman. However, I think that's what Gunter was. Gunter Piece of Cake started off with this job, so we're not going to go and do that. Uh, there's a tinker, so you can go and tinker with copper and wood and such like. Or there's a potter, so you get a potter's wheel and you can make, you know, bowls and plates and things. That sounds quite nice. Then we've got Herbalist, but of course that's what Claude Cup of Tea did. And there is the herb tea for which Claude was so famous, so we're not going to go down that route. Uh, we've got a preacher. Obviously very new, sort of linked to the new religion kind of system. Then we've got a barber. 
This is really interesting. So, you know, they give people washes, they give people haircuts, and they pull their teeth out as well, because I guess in ye olde medieval times there were no dentists. I don't really know. So there we go. Yep, so people go to the barbers, get their hair cut, and have their teeth pulled out at the same time. Uh, then, of course, we get into this one here, which is a robber. And I don't like the idea of this. And I know a lot of people might be expecting us to start as a robber, because that's what we didn't kind of have from our previous three runs. Because last time, you know, the previous three runs were a farmer, a craftsman, and a herbalist. But now I've got all these other options, and I don't want to go and be a robber. I don't like the sound of being a robber. Um, also down here, we've got a new grave digging kind of startup skill. Again, you know, important in ye olde medieval times, although I do think they're a little bit nefarious. I do think they're digging graves, but also they might be sort of plundering graves as well, because, you know, they're making bone bracelets, and they're acquiring bones and bone glue and bone dust and stuff. There's a lot of kind of bone-related things going on that I think might possibly be a little bit suspicious. And then the final one here is a minstrel. They're musicians in their heart and soul. They live to entertain the folk. And that is what Ulrika is going to be. Ulrika is going to be a minstrel. I like the sound of that. So we get a minstrel's tent, uh, and yeah, she can go around the place and play some music, and she can present a concert from her minstrel's tent, which just sounds wonderful. I love the sound of that. I like the idea that she's going to go around the place and perform. She's going to give back to the community. She's going to give everybody the gift of, you know, music and poetry and stories and whatever else they're doing. You know, she's going to sing and tell stories and all that kind of stuff. And I like the idea of that. I think that is very good. And she is kind of dressed for the part as well. So we've not gone down somebody who's wearing sort of more work attire. I think six. Yeah, six is quite worky. You know, six looks like you're going to work. You've got an apron on, your hair's tied back. It looks like you're going to go and do some sort of, you know, proper sort of work stuff. Um, whereas clothing eight is more sort of that looks more like you're going to go and perform. You've got, you know, as, as nice a dress on as we can have being, you know, a lowly peasanty type. And we've got some lovely flowers in our hair to make ourselves look very nice. So we're going to go for that. So yeah, there we go. Ulrika is going to be a minstrel. We're going to go and do some top level barding. So the final thing to do is sort out Ulrika's abilities down here. Now, all the abilities begin at three, which is OK, but we don't get any extra kind of points to spend. So if we do want to increase one ability, we have to take points away from another one. I think, however, we do need to get our charisma up. We definitely need a charisma boost because, you know, we're a singer. We're a performer. We're going to be playing music and presenting concerts and telling jokes and generally trying to impress people with our, you know, sort of performing abilities and wit and charm generally. So I think we do need quite a bit of charisma. So I think... Let's take a point away from perception, because that's okay. We don't need that early on. That We can manage without that. That's fine. And then put that into charisma. And then could we also, could we lose a point of dexterity? Could we cope with that? I think we could. So let's go up to charisma five. However, I think as well, we do need to have intelligence set to four to begin with. Because if I remember correctly, I think this is right. The higher your intelligence, the quicker you're going to level up. So if we have a slightly higher intelligence from the start, we're going to level up a bit quicker, which means we can then put the points back into sort of dexterity and perception and also strength, because I think we take a point of strength away and we put that into intelligence. We don't need strength early on. It's fine. We're not going to get involved in fights if we can help it. We're not going to do heavy lifting or anything. We're going to be out there, you know, performing and playing music and making people laugh and smile and all that kind of stuff. So there we go. I think that looks about right. So strength 2, dexterity 2, intelligence 4, perception 2, and charisma a mighty 5. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So there we go. With that done, Ulrika, it's now time to head over to Visby to begin the tale of the Biscuits dynasty. And here we go. So welcome to Visby, everybody. It's currently spring in the year 1400, and there is Ulrika very patiently waiting for us outside of her house. Now, what is your house called? It's called Arquebuses and Roses. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I think it's Arquebus, maybe. Isn't that a gun? Isn't that like a big, long, kind of shooty rifle type thing? Okie doke, that's a bit of a weird name for your cottage or reeker, but okie doke, that's fine. Maybe you just moved in here. You didn't name it yourself or whatever. I don't know. But, you know, it looks very nice. It's a lovely little sort of tiny petite type cottage type thing. It's very nice. It's not grand, but you know what? It's home and it will do. Hello, why are you stood next to us? Thorge? Thorg? Hello, I think you were from another, you were from one of the other dynasties. Hang on a minute, hang on, can we slow time down a bit? Because yeah, you've got the little sort of dynasty sort of flag portrait thing over your head. Did you just do something to our house? 
did that person just do something bad to our house? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so now we're in slow-mo mode. What I think we need to do is, before we go and look around the place and see where we are and take a look at, you know, Visby itself, I think we need to get our kind of our special building set up, our kind of business building. Because as we've just seen, all the other dynasties are now on the map as well, and we're going to be competing with them to find the best spots to build our business. So where is the nearest market? Please tell me it's quite nearby. It's over there. Okay, so there is the market. So Pilhagen Market, I assume. Um, yeah, there's a great big bit of space over here. I mean, it will mean squashing those lovely yellow flowers. But if we can get our little sort of whatever it is, our bard, tent, minstrel, hut, whatever it is, if we can get our thing set up over there, that would be wonderful. So let's get that in now. Let's get that in as soon as we can. So what do we have? We have 3,000 money. And I like the way it just says money. Just, you know, generic money. 3,000 units of the money of the place you're in. Um, so let's get this thing built. And then when it's down, we can then go and look at everything else. So... Here we go. A minstrel's tent. Very nice indeed. Can be built in the village. That's where we are. The minstrels perform more or less spectacular musical performances on the little stage near the large tent. OK, so it comes to the tent and a kind of performing stage. OK, that's very good. Um, OK. Oh, yeah, we've got to name it. Uh, OK, so the name that it's given by default is Attractive Stage Performers. <laughs> That seems a little bit, seems a little bit self-aggrandizing, doesn't it? Um, no, let's not call it that. Right, what can we call our little sort of, uh, our little minstrel's tent? Let's call it the Luton Flute. I quite like that. We don't have that many characters to play with because it kind of caps out at 20. So it can't be too elaborate, but the Luton Flute sounds quite nice. So, okay, we'll have one of those, please. Oh, look at that. It fits perfectly just there. It is right opposite the market. That is absolutely spot on. We can't put it around the corner. Uh, yep, yeah, we'll have it just there, please. Yes, please. I mean, yeah, we have just obliterated all of those lovely plants. Why we got rid of the ones over here, I have no idea. But there we go. So that is now underway. And it's right next to the market, which is really, really good for us. Because, you know, foot traffic... People might be going to the market to pick up some food or some materials and they might see our performance and stop and, you know, just sort of stare for a while, enjoy it, have a little dance. And then at the end of it, they might give us a few coins, which is very good. So, yeah, that's a very good place for our little sort of performance stage thing. OK, right now we can have a look around. So where are we? We're in Pilhagen. OK, doke. So whereabouts is that in relation to everything else? So we are. Hang on. Where's... Where's Visby itself? So Visby, the sort of town, is all the way over there. My goodness me, we are quite far away. We are right on the edge, I think. Yeah, so we're not near the town at all. We might be the furthest away. Is that like a stone, like a Stonehenge type thing? Oh, that's exciting. There's like a stone thing going on. That's all very good. Um, yeah, so we're really far away from the main town itself. We're quite far away. We're right out here over in the very edge of the map, I imagine. But okay, so that's where we are. There's a sort of slightly fancier, more upmarket place over here because these houses are not quite the shacks that we live in. So these are slightly fancier. So the outskirts of the town. And then the town is over here. And I really like the town. I kind of chose it partly because it does have the interesting kind of distinction of being on an island. So we have to do everything via the port if you want to do kind of foreign trade stuff. But also, I just like the fact that the sort of the main town of Visby is on its own little tiny island surrounded by these great big kind of castle wall things. It does look really good. It looks very good indeed. Um, and yeah, look, the main castle thing, the kind of the governor's palace, sticks out into the water of the harbour. It looks really good. It's very dramatic. Look at that. All very striking. Um, and yeah, here's the harbour. Looks very nice. Got uh, you know, a pointy bit there and a pointy bit there. Very good. And yeah, if we go out and look that way, it looks really pretty. Look at that. That looks very nice indeed. There is the port. So that's where we're going to be going a bit later on in the game. We're not quite at that level just yet. But at some point, we will live over here. And it's quite big. It's quite a big place, is Visby. There's a lot going on. So we'll live over here at some point. And yeah, if we do want to do sort of foreign trading, we will have to go to the port. Because, yeah, there's no kind of foreign trade little sort of tunnel things over here on the map, I don't believe, because, yeah, we're on an island and that doesn't work. That's not how that's going to work at all. So there we go. So, yeah, we do have... Is there another village over here somewhere? Yeah, there's one over here. So there's one right at the other end. So that's kind of... That's as far away from us as it can be, really. And then I think there is another village in the middle somewhere as well. There we go. So there's this one over here. So hang on. So what's that one? That is Ostrobin. So we've got an Ostrobin market... And we've got, where's the market over here? Um, what if mean if you dream about flying? Fortune is smiling upon you. <laughs> 
some in-depth conversations going on. So Loma Lunda Market. So that's the little sort of village of Loma Lunda. And then over here, there was, what was it called again? I've forgotten what it was called. Ostrobin. And then we are all the way over here. So we're Pilhagen, was it? Yeah, Pilhagen. Okay, right. Wonderful. There we go. So we've had a little look around. Um, and yeah, around Pilhagen itself, what is there? Is there another sort of minstrel tent type thing? We've got a croft. There's a mine over there. There's a craftsman's hut. There's a herb hut. Oh, we can go and buy some tea from there. Very nice. There's, uh, there's an orchard type hut thing going up just there. That's nice. There's a cottage. There's a cottage, there's a church. Okay, it looks like we might be the only sort of minstrel tent thing in the local area, which is good, you know, because less competition means more people can come our way and enjoy our singing and dancing and they can give us all their lovely money. So I think whilst our work building is being constructed, let's get Ulrika to pop inside her cottage for a second and do a little bit of work. And of course, that does mean we get to see inside the cottage, which is all very exciting indeed. But yeah, I think because we can't do much else right now, she might as well go inside and make the... um the kind of the washcloth type things. I think we can make those and some bouquets of flowers as well, because at some point in the very near future, Ulrika is going to have to, you know, she's going to have to go and turn the charm on. She is going to have to go and do some wooing and do a little bit of romance because at some point we do need to get married. We need to have some children to carry on the dynasty because of course, if something were to happen to Ulrika right now, that'd be it. We've got no heirs to carry things on. It will be game over, which would be very sad. So let's pop inside. So here we go, Ulrika. Um, that's going to take forever if we leave you on slow. -mo. Let's put it on to normal speed. And there we go. We can see inside Ulrika's little house. And isn't that nice? Is that... What is that? It's like a horse's leg or something hanging off the wall. That's a bit weird, Ulrika, but okay. But yeah, there's all sorts going on. There's a nice little sort of rug thing. There's a kind of... Uh, what's that? Like a sort of... Uh, a wheel, like a sharpening kind of thing for sharpening knives on. Uh, so yeah, some of the things in the house do actually have a purpose. So we can look at that. I think that shows us the family tree. I thought that, yeah, there, there you go. There you go, family tree. So the picture thing shows us the family tree. That's a kind of workbench over there. The stairs are, the stairs are go to sleep. Oh, okay, so we sleep up in the roof. Okie doke, that's fine. Got the skill tree over there. Um, I think that might be it, possibly. I think that might be it. Okay. So let's go and see if we can actually do some work over here. So can we go? Oh, no, hang on a minute. Like that. Can we go over here? There we go. These are the things that we want to do. So what have we got? Uh, flannels, that's it. Yeah, so we want to make some flannels. So then we can have a nice sort of wash, a bit of a clean, and then we can go and try and sort of impress some people. And then, yeah, let's make some flowers as well. And what's that there? Potion of the Fate Women. Oh, what's that? This tasty potion can only be used by a member of the Guild of Alchemists. Oh, Okay, right, let's not worry about that then, because we're definitely not one of those. Um, okay, so let's get a few flannels made. So what does it require? Bucket of water and cloth. Yeah, we've got that, and I think we've got enough to make some bouquets of flowers as well. Although it does require two wild roses, so we can't make as many of those. But okay, so how about we go to here and we say, what have we got? Ten, yeah, we can't make 60 flannels. Let's make ten. So make ten flannels, please, and then make five of those, I think because I don't think we can make any more. But that should be fun. That'll keep you busy for a little while, Ulrika. Um, okay, how do we how do we make you do this? There are currently no workers available for this action or order. Uh, okay, how do we make Ulrika do this? How do we tell you? Hang on, can we drag Ulrika in? Or oh, you're over there. Do we need to hang on? Hire a worker. Select a family. Oh, right, I see. So we kind of have to hire you, as it were, like this is a business, to actually perform these jobs. Okay, that's fine. Ulrika, uh, yeah, confirm that. So now does that mean you're going to go and get on with that? Does that mean you're going to move over here and start doing stuff? Yeah, you seem to have targeted that. If we put that onto half speed. Yeah, there you go. And for some reason, you've got plus 5% productivity. I have no idea why, but there you go. And look at that. She's gone over to the table inside her little sort of cottage type thing. And she is, I mean, you know, she's waving her hands around and using the force and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, she's over at the workbench doing some stuff, which is very good. I like that. I do like that you can see inside the houses and you can see in other things as well. You can see inside, I think, some of the shops and the churches and things now, all that kind of stuff. So there we go. Now, how do we get out? Because we can leave you doing that. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Why are you using a hammer? Aren't you making some flowers and putting some cloth in some water? <laughs> oh, Rika, that's not how you make flannels. Um... Okay, how do we get out? Is that get out? Exit interior view. Okay, 
So now that's done. How is our how is our building doing? Is it finished? Uh, not quite yet. It is very slowly but very surely rising up out of the ground. There is the Luton flute. It's all very exciting. Okay, so we'll leave Ulrika doing that. At some point, yeah, we do need to go and have a chat with some people. Oh, there we go. New building has been finished. Wonderful. Okay, so hang on. Slow time down. Who's that? Thorg. Again, this person here sort of wandering about looking at our stuff. Hello. Um, okay, so we have ourselves a tent with some bunting. I do like that. I do like a nice bit of bunting. And that is some top quality bunting going on right there. So yeah, we have a little tent. Or I guess, yeah, that's where they keep all their kind of equipment. And then, yeah, this looks like the kind of performing stage. So I guess we kind of stand on here and, you know, play instruments and sing and dance and all that kind of stuff. And look, there is a... Is that a lute? I don't really know. I'm not entirely sure. I couldn't distinguish a lute from other things. But it, I think if it's not a lute, it's something very closely related to one. But there we go. Right, hang on. So now do we need to get some people working here? We could. I suppose we could put Ulrika here because she does have the charisma. So we could get one worker and then put Ulrika here when she's finished doing her stuff. And then she could just come here for, I don't know, a few hours. Do a few hours of work at the minstrel's tent and then go wandering off to, uh, you know, to just, you know, see if she can do a spot of romance. That might be quite nice. OK, yeah, let's do that, shall we? So Ulrika, when you finish that, you can come here. But let's get somebody else right now. OK, right, here we go. So this is the new sort of the new screen for businesses and such like then. Um, so what can we do? Two actions. Play music. So basic reward, 36 XP. Um, OK, so go out into the street and play one of your wonderful songs to the people. They will thank you with chinking coins. OK, that sounds very nice. And then present a concert. 42 XP. Minstrels claim to need the close contact with and the cheers of their audience more than they need coins. So you play a concert on the stage of your Minstrels 10 and people will surely flock to you in droves. Okay, we'll hold you to that game. Um, I think let's get let's get a new worker. Okay, would you like to hire a new worker or assign a family member to the position? Okay, right now let's get a new person. So yeah, okay, 200 money. We've got one and a half thousand money, so 200 is fine. Um, Okay, so we have Torstein or Torstein. Hello, how are you? So you're waiting for work. Uh, okay, so do we... Hang on. So if we want you to play music... Ah, okay, right. We just drag that over you because it's green. Okay, so we've told Torstein to go and play some music at the lute and flute. But I think, yeah, they're going to go and play music somewhere else, I think. So there is Torstein looking very good. Very good indeed. At some point... In fact, you know what? Maybe we should do this right now. Hang on. Can we nip over to the market? Because you might get attacked at some point. I'm looking at you over here, Thorg. Thorge? Thorge? Don't know how you say that. But yeah, you are you are acting very suspiciously around us. I don't like it. So yeah, I think maybe we might want to get you. Come over here for a second. You can go back and do some stuff in a bit. Um, let's get you coming over to the market. Just so we can actually get you... Possibly yeah, a weapon, just to defend yourself in case any you know, nefarious ne'er-do-wells do try and stop you whilst you're doing your singing. Which would be very rude. So here we go. So you pop into there. Okay, slow time right down again. What do we want to give you? What would we like to give you? I mean, do we have anything that makes you more charismatic as well? That would be really good. Do we have luxury items? Increase your charisma or whatever? Um, oh yeah, these are that's really expensive. That's incredibly expensive. Okay, but hang on a minute. Hang on. Let's just go to weapons and armor. Um, oh, look, there's a bomb. <laughs> there's a comedy sort of bomb with a sparking bit on the top. I mean, just a little sort of a little sword would do the job. Uh, oh, crikey's. Okay, a short sword is 914 to buy. Wow. Okay, that's that seems very expensive. Okay, how about a dagger? How about a little dagger? Just to you know, make you a little bit safer. It's got to be better than nothing. And possibly some leather gloves. 411 money for, for leather gloves. Good grief. And a dagger. Yeah, okay. So let's buy... Uh, yeah, one dagger. Oh, okay, it defaults to one now. That makes more sense. It used to default to lows, didn't it? But I'd like to buy a dagger, please. Okay, would you like 50 of them? <laughs> it's like, no, I don't have 50 hands to hold those daggers. Uh, so yeah, we'll buy you a dagger... And we will invest in some of these gloves. We'll invest in that. I mean, it's a bit expensive. And given that we've just paid 200 money to have you even sort of recruited in the first place, 
you are relatively expensive now. So hopefully that will help though. So you've got a little bit of armor, a little bit of defense, and you can do a tiny bit of attacking as well. Okay, there you go. I feel like you're in a slightly better place. There is not anything. What about trinkets? Is there anything we can get to... That increases your speed. That's your ability to learn. It's all very expensive. A dark talisman. Uh, oh no, that's minus one charisma. We don't want that. Um, a pot. You can just have a pot just to carry around with you. There you go. <laughs> just to have one. A cupboard. Very important. Very, very important. Nice to know that Bernard's still around. Um, bandages. Do we need bandages just in case they get hurt? I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be okay. I was kind of hoping for something that might have given them a little boost to charisma, but I imagine that's going to be all in the luxury items, is it? Reputation bonus. Oh, hang on. A silver ring. Plus 2% ability to gain influence. But you're not going to be doing that. You're going to be earning money. I don't think you do kind of influence stuff. Um, do you know what? It's fine. It's all oh, money back. Hang on. What does that do? Plus two bonus when bargaining. Okay, no, we need that to go. I and mean, that would go to our transporters normally. But, of course, with our kind of, with our business, with our whole business model, we don't need transporters because we have no goods. We're purely sort of service based because previously we'd have sort of goods that need to come in. So the transporter would find some stuff. They would take it back to our building. That would be processed into another good. And that good would be either sold in the shop front or would be taken back to the market. But we don't have that. We don't have a kind of good to sell. So, okay, that's quite good. So we're saving money on transporters. Okay, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah, okay, we'll leave that for now. So there you go. You're a bit better sort of in terms of defense. You can fight back now. So now if we go back into there, can we tell you... Can we unpause your thing there? Yeah, resume working. There we go. So now let's go and see if you actually do go and play some music. What exactly happens here? So turn it off of slow-mo. Let's just take a look. Oh, look, there's somebody there selling like potions and things. I've got them out of the front. That's nice. So you are wondering, okay, you're going quite far away. I was thinking maybe you could play some music around the market, but no, you thought, do you know what? Over here, you're going to play music to the sunflowers. <laughs> okay, okay, no, that's fine. And you've got a little sort of, sort of, again, I don't know what that is. Like a fiddle? Is that a fiddle? Are you out there doing some fiddling with the sunflowers, so to speak? Um... Okay, wonderful. I mean, hopefully some people might pop by. I think maybe you've not picked the best area to do your work, but okie doke. I mean, how long does it take? Hang on, if we click you, we can see how long that's going to take. Um, I mean, there's somebody coming by. Pele, maybe. Pell? Pella? Do you want to come over? I think my Pella. Pella, do you want to come over here and listen to this music? Because Torstein is playing some great stuff. Would you like to listen? Uh, oh, you do? And what about you? What about you, Volunda? <gasps> What a beautiful melody, says Volandar. Oh, this is very good. They're both having a splendid time. Ulrika is still working on the flannels. Okay, this is good. Uh, oh, now somebody else has joined in. I love this song. Says Un. Un with your amazing hat. Okay. Right, now what happens? Oh, look, we've got a crowd. <laughs> got an actual crowd of people. Right, hang on. Slow time to... Oh, we lost some money there. I, I pressed the wrong button. I was trying to slow t slow time down to see what rewards we got, but I pressed speed up instead. Botherations. Okay, never mind. Uh, right, so where are you now? And uh, now you're down here, and you've got a little sort of trumpety type thing. We're going to say that's a flute, because you know, you've come from the, the f lute and the flute. Um, okay, so now you're down here playing some music. So again, let's just... Hang on, let's put time on nice and quick. And let's just see if people come down here to watch. So, okay, we have a couple of people already. So, hang on, who do we have? Un and Volundar again. Okay, we all like this music, says Agnes32 of Visby. Uh, okay, this is wonderful. So, Chappie here. Torstein is getting a little bit of a following. He's going to be famous soon. Uh, okay, so how long is it going to take until you finish? Okay, so let's move time on a bit quicker. And then we'll slow it down again. Here we go. Right, so slow time down. To maybe there. Okay, so what do we get? He's bowing. He's bowing. 39 XP. Uh, 3 gold, 3 gold, 3 gold. Okay. Not exactly raking it in, though, are we? But we're not spending anything on kind of outgoings. Uh, oh, and it says failure on it. What exactly did you fail to do? I'm not entirely sure. It says failure. Uh, okay, fine. You failed to do something. I don't know what you failed to do, but you failed to do it. Okie doke. Right, Ulrika, come on. Come on, how long does it take, Ulrika? Uh, oh, where are you? You're down there. You're looking in the box now. Okie doke. Right, so let's move time on nice and quick. Let's see if you can finish doing your jobs. 
because you can't be taking that much longer, can you? Um, ah, there we go. I think she's finished. I think now she's just kind of standing around the place. Okay, so now, Ulrika, can we get you to go over to here, please? Um, yep, yeah, there we go. She's left the uh, she's left the confines of the house. She's going to go over to uh, essentially to work to the lute and the flute. So let's get her in. And then we'll put her to work on the stage, because that's kind of what we had her sort of set up to do. She's very charismatic, so hopefully she can do some work on the stage and impress loads of people. So, um, okay, so yeah, do we just do that to her? No. Members of your dynasty. Um, okay, hang on. Do we have to do that? So do, I don't know, do one concerty thing, um, and then you can do it. How do we tell you to do that job? Uh, I don't know how we tell you to do that, though. That's the only thing. I'd like one of those to take place, but I'm not entirely sure how that happens, because Ulrika is not doing it at all. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, hang on. I know what we need to do. I know what we need to do. Do we need to set her as a worker? Yes. Assign a family member as a worker. All of your family members are already employed. Ah! She's employed back at the house. Hang on. <laughs> We've got to go and fire you from here, have we? Okay, this is a bit daft, but okay, right. Can we... Um, hang on. Uh, resume work. How do we... Hang on, what's that? Uh, discard items. How do we fire you? How do we say clear off? Hang on, what's that? That's manual production. That's halt production. Ulrika, we don't want you to work here anymore. We'd like you to work somewhere else. Can you please stand down from your sort of home position and go and do some singing and dancing? Because that would be wonderful. Um, right, hang on. There must be a way to sort of to stop her working. Hang on, what's that? Resume working. Pause working. There must be a way to stop her working in here. Hang on, if I just jab enough buttons, I'm sure we'll find out what those buttons are. Oh, it's down here. Look, right down at the bottom on our kind of toolbar thing. Dismiss employee. Okay, yeah. So, fire Ulrika Biscuits from working in her own house, <laughs> which does seem a little bit weird. Um, and then, can we then hire her? Uh, there we go. So, put you in there, yes. And now, oh, there you go. You are, you're working, you're doing the concert stuff. Okay, so let's go and have a look. Oh, and look at that, you are, you're stood on the stage. Plus 5% productivity for some reason. But there you go. You're stood on the stage with your little sort of whatever that instrument is, fiddle type thing. And um, yeah, nobody's watching right now. But hang on, how long does that take? Uh, hang on, put it on to normal speed. Is this going to take ages? Yeah, that's taking a long time. So you're putting on a full, you know, a full on concert. We're getting, you know, an hour or two of music out of this. Okay, that's fine. Where's, um, where's other chap? He's just over here again playing music to the flowers. I mean, there's a load of people over here. Look, there's loads of people over there. Could you go and play your music over there? That would be wonderful. I'm sure the pigs appreciate it. But maybe over here you could get a little bit more money. Um, nobody watching Ulrika. Nobody watching Ulrika Biscuits right now, which is a bit of a shame. Let's move time on, on super speed and just see how we get on with this. Oh, there you go. One of the guards. Two of the guards. <laughs> Should you not be guarding and doing guard stuff? So we've got Rasmus and we've got Frederick. Oh, and now we've got and we've got Gunnar. OK, so three people. Let's dance. Excellent. Oh, they're, they're loving it. Well done, Ulrika. Look at this captive audience. You're not even three quarters of the way round yet. Um, would you like to would you like to join in Aleph? Would you like to come and watch? It's a good show. These people flying about on horses are all over the shop. Um, let's dance. I get the feeling that Rasmus loves a dance. He, he just loves dancing. He loves busting some moves, does Rasmus. Um, dun, dun, da, da. You're trying to sing along as well. <laughs> okay, this is wonderful. Right, okay. Let's put time on nice and quick. What exactly do we get at the end of one of these? So the time is ticking down. Put it onto normal. As soon as it finishes, put it onto slow. So 46 XP, success, and 53 gold. 53 money out of that. Okay, that's very good. That is very good. Already we're up to 888 money. I mean, that did come down quite a bit because, yeah, we invested some of it in Chappie's sort of, you know, weapons and such like. So that's actually quite good. OK, so Ulrika has done that. So I think what now we need to do is we need Ulrika to... I mean, do we get her to do another one of those or do we get her to go and do some wooing of some people? Uh, do you know what, Ulrika? Do one more show thing. 
just because it was impressive and people seemed to like it. So there you go. You go and do one more show. Back onto the stage with you. They want an encore, but a really, really long encore. And um, yeah, when that's done, when you finish doing that, maybe then we'll hire somebody else. Uh, they can do all the performing and then you can go about the place and, you know, try and you know, woo some people, impress them, do some good chat up lines, all that kind of stuff. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. Something just happened. Something alerted. Minus 5% productivity and minus 2 has gone to whatever that little icon means. Is that another one of the... Is that another dynasty? Is another dynasty trying to interfere with our affairs here at the Loot and Flute? Because that would be outrageous if they were trying to do that. I've got no idea what that was. But yeah, we got alerted. I don't quite know what that means. There you go, look, or Rick, you've got one person. We've got Pella again. Pella just sort of enjoying your music. Okay, that's good. And um, yeah, let's have a look at the other the other sort of rival dynasties whilst we're here. So who have we got? We've got the Brodersons. We've got the Lassersons. We've got the Emilsons. We've got the Martins. We've got the Hansons. And we've got the Taralfsons. Good name, Taralfsons. Okay. So plenty of other sort of people to be wary of. So yeah, the six other dynasties. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that was something to do with one of the other dynasties. They've sort of interfered with, yeah, they've set a guard to watch us or something. They've paid a guard off to, I don't know, do something over here to make our little sort of tent a bit less effective, possibly. I don't really know. Oh, and look at that. Ulrika has another fan. We've got Hugo now. So both Hugo and Pella enjoying Ulrika's little concert here. Okay, no, that's good. I mean, she's about, what, three quarters of the way through completing it. So you two are going to be here for a little while. So, I mean, I kind of feel like we should put chairs out or something. Should we put some chairs out so people can sit down and enjoy the enjoy the music and the jokes and everything else? Are you going to join in? Gunnar, you know you want to. Gunnar. Come on, Gunnar. Ah, uh, boo, Gunnar. You don't know good things when they're presented to. Um, okay, let's see what money we can get out of these two then, because there are only a couple of people. So, oh no, hang on. You've come in right at the end. Okay, so we got ourselves another 53 money. Okay, that is pretty good. So now, Ulrika, I think you now need to go and just have a little look around the place, try and find yourself, you know, a potential suitor kind of thing. Uh, and in the meantime, in here, just to keep the money ticking up, I think what we should do is... Um, oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. We need to fire Ulrika from working in her own business. So fire you so you can go and then hire a new worker. Hire one that costs 200 money. Yes, please. Who have we got? Um, Anna? Enna? You just there. I don't quite know how to pronounce your name. So you can do the performances on the stage. So Torstein can go and do sort of, you know, playing music around the place. And um, Anna there can be solely sort of a stage performing person. So there we go. We've now got the two people in doing stuff. Oh, she's not stood on the stage. <gasps> she's gone all kind of maverick. Look at that. And she's, yeah, she's banging a little drum type thing. I don't know how she's going to make that last two hours or whatever, but okay. She must be telling some very good jokes with it, I guess. And now that means that Ulrika here, now we can go and have a look around and just do a spot of romance. That could be quite exciting. Um, an employee has reached a new professional level. <gasps> Tor Torstein's leveled up already. Oh, well done. Okay. Okay, so now you've gone up a level, so hang on. Hang on, I can't remember how this works. Do we need to press a button or something? Was there a button that we press? Oh no, here we go. He's already leveled up. So now we get to give him a point in one of these. I mean, I think charisma. I think charisma. He's in minstrel's garb, which is very good. Um, yeah, another point of charisma. That's got to be a good thing for somebody who is going around doing a lot of singing and such. So there you go. Five charisma. Well done. That happened very quickly. Good job, Torstein. Okay, so Ulrika, let's have a look around to see if you can find anybody that catches your eye. So let's have a look down here. So romances and liaisons. Okay, so embark on a romance. Okay, I think that's what we need to do, isn't it? So if we click this, there we go. We now get a big list of people. So I think Gunnar. Hang on, wasn't Gunnar impressed with... Wasn't he impressed with... Was he watching on the stage? I can't remember. Uh, Hugo, Gustav. I mean, we might want to look at their... We might want to look at their stats. You're level one. Oh, okay. Okay, no, maybe not you then. Um, Hugo is level one. Are they all level one? Are they all level one? And you're level seven. Oh, Gustav, you're level seven. However, you are 45. You are 45 years old. How old is... um? How old is Ulrika? She's 18. Okay, right. So... We might want to get somebody slightly younger. So they're going to be around with us for a while. Um, okay, their age is just there. Of course it is. Um, Hugo there. Hugo is a squire. 
Oh, that's very fancy. Oh, look at you, Hugo. You've got on fancy clothing. You've got a garb of arrogance on. Okay, maybe we don't want to go and talk to you. I'd like someone possibly a little bit more humble, maybe. Um, okay, okay. How about, uh, oh, Volta, a single citizen. You're 19 years old. Uh, you've got some good strength going on. Okay, that could be quite good. Uh, you're in the old town and you are wearing a gambeson. Okay, I think the old town might be quite some distance away. What if we pick from the world? Like, are there people around? Um, Hugo. Ah, there you go. Hugo's right there. And Gunnar is just there. Oh, okay. So these two are right next to us. Hang on a minute. Hang on. So if we go and do that. Hang on. Let's go and look at that. So Gunnar and Hugo are literally right in front of us. So you've got... You've got twos and everything. A little bit disappointing. And Hugo... Oh, Hugo's very clever. Hugo is very intelligent. Not the most charismatic. But then we're quite charismatic. That could be quite good. Maybe we go for you. In fact, you've got Dexterity 5, Intelligence 5, and Perception... Perception is boosted. Oh, yeah, you've got Perception of 1, because it's boosted by 3, because you're holding a torch. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so Strength 2, Dexterity 5, and Intelligence 5, however, are not too bad at all. And you're right here. And I kind of feel like that's what... That's what Ulrika would do. I don't think she'd go and try and sort of... You know, try and woo a noble or whatever. Because, you know, she knows her place in the world. We're right at the bottom of the kind of society ladder. So I think... Do you know what? Yeah, Hugo. Let's go and have a chat with Hugo. Let's see how this goes. So we're going to run over. And Hugo is only over here by the look of it. Okay. Uh, oh, hang on. Hang on. A thing has happened that I don't know how what to do with. Okay. Ulrika Biscuits has started a conversation. Um. Oh. There's different sort of conversational gambits we can go with. Um, may God bless your lovely hand. Okay. <laughs> Seems a bit weird. I would like to ask your permission or just one look into your eyes. Okay. So we're quite charismatic. So let's go for the 73% um, chance of success, I imagine. I would like to ask your permission. That's always good. Um, I would like to ask your permission to love you freely and to do anything you ask of me. A crack of hello might have been nice to start with, but okay, careful of that torch he's waving around. <laughs> um Okay, right, let's put this on to on to let's put it on to normal speed. So I assume he's going to reply at some point. When does he reply? When this thing runs out, maybe? Maybe that triggers the next part of the conversation. Okay, so let's see what happens then. This is fascinating. This is all very new. Um certainly you have my permission. So shall we talk about my wishes now? Okay, I feel deeply uncomfortable, but okay, so what do we do now? Oh, success, there we go. So, I think, oh, I think he gave, he gave the performing person three gold, and then we kind of impressed him as well. Okay, so can we right-click him? No, that just follows him around. Okay, right, hang on a second. So now, we've embarked on a romance. Let's compliment Hugo. Let's go and just be nice to him. Let's just go and be nice to him and say, hello, you've got a lovely torch or whatever. Um, we'll go down charisma again. You are so beautiful and educated. You stand out from all the others. Oh, Ulrika, you do have a way with words. Okay, so move that on nice and quick. Because I don't think anything happens until he's finished. Yes, you're absolutely right. Thank you. Okay, he's a bit full of himself, but you know, he's confident. It's fine. He knows what he wants. Okay, so now Hugo likes us 18 hearts more. Ooh. As a thing going. Oh, we haven't used our flannelly things. I can made loads of flannels. I completely forgot. Hugo, wait there a second. Hang on. I'm going to go and have a wash. I'll be back in a second. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we have some flannels. So how about we take some flannels? So let's take, I know, just a couple. Take two flannels and two lots of the flowers. There you go. So take those. Wonderful. Uh, and then, yeah, so do that. But now how do we use these again? Uh, consumables. Okay, here we go. This is good. Uh, yeah, and... Is that going to... Are you going to use that on yourself? Do you know that that's a thing you need to use on you? Yes, I imagine so. So put it onto normal speed. And there we go. Just a little bit of a scrub around the place. And splendid. Right. So now we have an extra point of charisma because we're all perfumed. Okay, right. So now I think we can go back here. Um, let's... Hang on. Can we give... Where's the gifting thing? That's complimenting somebody. Um, how do we give somebody a gift? That was here somewhere, wasn't it? Because now we're carrying flowers. So we should... Hang on, bouquet of flowers. Oh, there you go, yes. Um, yeah, Hugo, here you go. Let's go and give Hugo some flowers, if we can find him again. I do find it weird how they know where they are. <laughs> They've got, like, ye olde medieval satnav going on. Oh, and look at that. 
Somebody over here enjoy. Hang on, is that Hugo? It is. It's Hugo. <laughs> Hugo is enjoying watching um watching Anna play over there. Oh, that's wonderful. Look at that. He's giving us money as well. This is marvelous. Right. Okay. There you go. Would you like these flowers, Hugo? Don't burn them with the torch. Uh, that's quite the fancy bouquet right there. Did Hugo like that? Or has he got hay fever or something? Okay, no, he likes that a lot. Okay, well done. Okay, now what do you want to do? How about, how about we do a little bit of, a little bit of sweet talk? Oh my goodness me, the flirting is immense. Um, the dynasty Emilson has acquired a new title. Oh, they're just showing off. They're showing off with their fancy new titles. We're too busy doing some sweet talking and some extremely excessive flirting in front of this child. Uh, okay, right, and then I think, how about a little kiss on the cheek? Let, let's let's proper, let's really be forward about this. There you go, Hugo. Oh, are you blushing? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm shocked. I didn't expect that from you. Uh, what? Did Hugo just hit us in the face? <gasps> he, right, that's it. Hugo, I am afraid... Did you literally actually just hit us? Have we taken damage? We are wounded. Oh no, it's only wounded with a... Ah, it's only wounded with a romantic advance rejected. We're not injured in terms of... In terms of sort of physical health. I thought he hit us then. I was, I was going to say that was outrageous. Um, it was Ulrika leveled up. Oh, well then Ulrika. Oh, here we go. We can sort of offset one of these now, can't we? So how about we get our dexterity back up a point? I'd like to get strength, dexterity, and perceptional back up to three. So, yeah, let's get dexterity back up. There we go. Um, okay, yeah, I don't think he was... I don't think he actually attacked us properly just then. I think it was just he kind of just waved his arms and we took a bit of sort of emotional damage, as it were. Um, okay, let's go and try again. Let's just go and compliment him because now we need to get back in his good books. So where's he gone? Where has he gone? Uh, he's... <laughs> He's like one of our super fans. He just stands around listening to our stuff all the time. <laughs> we should make some records. Um, okay, Charisma, you are so beautiful and educated. Again, we've told him this before, but he seemed to like it last time. Right, okay. Move time on nice and quick. There we go. Just get the conversation bit going. You're absolutely right. Okie doke. So hang on a minute. So 15 kind of points back. So now, do we embark on a liaison with him? Because we've nearly got his kind of affection bar up to the top how about we just confirm that so okay oh look at this 93s i could talk to you all day and night long i was thinking about the two of us i noticed how sweetly you smile oh this is lovely i could talk to you all day and night long uh let's let's go for charisma again because we're quite good at that i was thinking about the two of us you know i like you very much and dot 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 and what here we go how is this gonna how is this gonna play out is he going to tell us to clear off or is he going to like the idea of it? And anything? Any thoughts on this, Hugo? Hugo, please talk to us. <laughs> Nothing is happening, Hugo. Hang on. Um, I feel the same, my lady. Let's go one step further. Oh, my goodness me. Um, OK, so now uh, would enjoy a nice present, it says now. Oh, OK. Well, hang on then. We can try that. Oh, we got some reputation. That's quite good. Uh, OK, hang on a minute. So a bouquet of flowers because that's the only present we have right now. Uh, okay, here you go. Would you like these flowers? I mean, last time you kind of chucked them on the floor and stamped on them because you hated them. But now do you like them? Perfect. This is going very well. Oh, well, Rika and Hugo. Look at the pair of you. What a wonderful couple. Uh, okay, now what do we do then? So do we have <gasps> a forbidden kiss? My goodness. End love affair. Propose marriage or marry. Oh, bye. <laughs> I mean, can we just... Can we go and marry him? I mean, I know we've only just met, but time goes by in a weird way. It's like the entirety of spring is going by. So, you know, this is all sorts of, you know, it's representing all sorts of, you know, picnics and dates and talks and all that kind of stuff. Um, do you know what? Let's uh, let's go and get engaged to Hugo. Let's see if he's up for that kind of thing. I imagine he's back here listening to our stuff. So <laughs> there he is over here chatting to a guard. Okay. So if we could just do this really quick. So hello. Um... Would you be my husband or let's get married? They're both charisma things. Okay, do you know what? Would you be my husband? Um, my darling, we've been courting and our love has only grown stronger. Would you dare to take the next step with me and join our lives in marriage? And also, this person here is kind of ruining the moment. <laughs> Frederick. Frederick, go away. I'm, this, is, this is an important moment in our, in our lives, in our relationship. And you are... 
I, I don't know what's going on there, Frederick, but you're you're certainly spoiling things right now. If you could just go, that'd be nice. Nope, you're just gonna it's gonna stay right there. Are you okay? Let's move time. And okay, he's cleared off out of the way. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Let's see. Is he gonna say yes? He's thinking about it. He's taking a while to sort of mull it over. That's okay. And any answers? You are my only love, and taking your hand in marriage would be an honour. Okay. So now what do we do? Now what happens? Do we just have to... Do we go and get married now? Or is there a button to press for that? Um, okay. So we're engaged then. Hang on. Is there a button down here? Oh, no, there. Look. Yeah, okay. Marry. After you become engaged to someone, you can tie the knot, either by committing to your vows in the house of God, or by a far less romantic wedding, without any kind of ceremony. No, okay. We need to have the whole sort of fancy church do, because I think then we get to see inside the church, which is exciting. So, yeah. Okay, let's confirm that. So never mind, start the wedding in the church or get instantly married. Okay, it costs us 50 gold to get married. I've got 991. Don't worry, I've got this. I've got this husband. Start wedding in a church. My love, I think it's time we finally tie the knot. And I want to get married in a beautiful church. There is one nearby. There's one, yeah, just there, look. There you go, St. Sebastian's. They're good in there, they'll do that. So um, yeah, let's see if that pans out. It, it takes a while for the conversations to happen, doesn't it? So here we go. So what are you going to say about it? Here we go. I'm glad that we both want a big ceremony in a church, my dear. Okay, so do we go over to the church now, I assume? Or do we get whisked away to the church? I have a great offer for you. <laughs> so you go, trying to sell torches to Frederick. Okay, so where are we going? Are we running off to the church? Okay, so we're going to the church. Hugo, I notice, is in here. Oh, look, we're inside the actual church. Oh my goodness me. Okay, hello. Uh, welcome to the house of God. Hello. Uh, what can Mother Church do for you today? I'm just looking around. Adopt an orphan. Join a monastery. Church wedding. Yeah, please. Can we have a church wedding? I'd love to pay 50 for a church wedding. Okay, success. A wedding is taking place. I know it's our wedding. Okay, so here we are. Oh, and look at this. There's a whole sort of church. There's nobody here because nobody knows we exist because it's just us who've moved in. Um, we could do with Hugo. <laughs> Hugo. Hugo, we're, you're kind of required as well. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. There he is. Where have you been? Um, okay. So now Hugo runs up. Yeah, I guess we're going to have no guests or anything. We are gathered to, uh, together today to join Hugo and Ulrika Biscuits in the bonds of holy matrimony. Oh, this is very good. Urk. <laughs> the priest is called Urk. Okay. All right. Let's put time into normal speed. We might be here all day. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah. Do we do dancing? And you, Hugo, do you wish to take Ulrika Biscuits to be your lawfully wedded wife to love and honour till death do you part? If so, answer with yes. Okay. <laughs> that would make sense. Yeah, that would be the affirmative kind of response. Let's put time on a bit quicker. Yes, says Hugo. And you, Ulrika Biscuits, do you wish to take Hugo to be your lawfully wedded husband to love and honour till death do you part? If so, answer with yes. I imagine we get a little pop-up, do we? Oh no, we just say yes. So be it. And there we go, he bows, and we do a little kind of curtsy. I declare you, man and wife. You may now kiss the bride, Hugo. Oh my goodness me. Oh, and that was nice. So hang on, hang on. So 10% fertility, and then we got excellent genes. Oh, okay. So what exactly did that do? Oh, and he's just having a little prey right in the middle of us. <laughs> Hello. Oh, there were some people. There were some people who came to watch. There's an informer just there. Okay, yeah, you work for the... um. You're one of the sort of worky people in the sort of government positions. Okay. And this person's just doing a spot of, doing a spot of preaching. Oh, we're now controlling Hugo. Ah, okay. So now we can just go and sit down and just do a bit of, do a bit of sort of worship and such like. Oh, and they're just doing the kind of cross and a bit of praying and such like. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I like the fact that we can go into the churches and have a look around. That is very good. Look at that. Those statues are a bit creepy. <laughs> Don't blink, my goodness me. Uh, okay, okay, right. And there we go. So our first kind of, our first couple of years, our first day, our first season, it's a bit weird time in the Guild 3, has gone by. So I think, let's get you both back home. Let's get you both back home. I think we know what's going to happen. So let's exit the building and you can go and exit the building. So let's get out of here. That would be marvellous. And home is only there, look. So you two both head back over in that direction, please. And Ulrika go there. Can we add 
Add a family member to the party. Yeah, add Hugo to the party. So now we can find where Hugo is at all times. Right, so you're both in this house. I think you know what that means. Uh, so can we, can we, uh, hang on, where's the, where's the thing where we try and, uh, you know, we, I don't know, write a nice letter to the stork. Whereabouts is that exactly? Hang on, let's see if I can find where that button is. Okay, do you know what? We can have a little a little smooch within marriage. That's okay. Apparently we're allowed to do that. So let's go and do that because that's quite nice. So, okay, speed time went a bit. Oh my goodness me. We'll look away. My goodness, what a lovely plant arrangement there is over there. Okay, right. So they've done that and their fertility has gone up and they've been buffed. Okay, that sounds good. And then here we go. Produce offspring. Okay, now... Yeah, go and go and write letters to the stork with Hugo. Um, we'll we'll leave. It's okay. I'm just going to go and look at the trees over there. My goodness me, look at the lovely sunflowers. Aren't they nice? <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Right, hang on. Are they actually? Yeah, there we go. Right, so that process is happening. We'll just go and look over here. We're going to look over here. I assume our working people have kind of gone home for the night. Yeah, they're both kind of. I think they both go home, but they're marked as staying in the tent. But yeah, they're not kind of on duty right now because you know it's quite late. It's quite late. Um, yeah, okay, right. Let's just, uh, let's wait for Ulrika and Hugo to finish writing their very, very lengthy letter to the stork. And there we go. Their letter is complete. And the stork has responded by saying, do you know what? Yes, I will deliver a baby in a little while, which is all very good. So there we go. Ulrika is pregnant. We have an heir to the dynasty on the way, which is marvellous. So what I think we should do is, um, let's get Hugo employed by the house. So Hugo can work in our house, if you like, and then Hugo can go and do this kind of boasting about our achievements thing just to get our influence up a bit because money is coming in via the sort of minstrel tent thing, but we've not got much in the way of influence happening. So you go and do that, please. You now go and do some boasting. You can go and do some showing off because that's okay. Um, and then, and then, yeah, Ulrika, what shall we do with you? I mean, we can't, oh, hang on, hang on, add-ons. Could we get ourselves... Oh, okay. To get another worker, it costs 600 money. That's quite expensive. That's quite a lot of money. Okay. Do you know what we'll do? Do you know what we will do right now? Let's go back into here. Uh, let's hire Ulrika as as a worker of the house as well. And um, yeah, Ulrika can also go and bear... Uh, sort of, you're not bear. Go and show off about our achievements. You can also go and just brag a little bit around the place just to get our influence up because that seems quite good. And then... Can we treat ourselves to a new title? No. We're a tiny, tiny amount of gold short of elevating ourselves up to a commoner. Okay, so we're a little bit short there. Never mind, never mind. Can we, um, can we get any kind of, um, can we get any more skills over here? What have we got there? Roguery one, and then minstrel one we already have, of course, because we're also using those skills. How much is, um, minstrel two? Uh, 750 gold, but we do need to be a yeoman for that. So we need to go up a couple of sort of social levels before we get that. But that means if we actually get that point, we can play a, a serenade. We can start serenading people. That's nice. Um, that means we can play music on a rostrum. Okay, exciting things going on. Um, and then it goes down to fighting. So a mercenary quarters. If you're on this skill, then you would embark on a journey down the dangerous and somewhat infamous path of a lansquenet. What? You will learn to fight protect others, and catch criminals. <gasps> Do we become the police? Oh, that's very exciting. Okay, I know it says fighting, and it seems, you know, a little bit sort of fighty because we're going to have mercenary things and barracks, but, I mean, that's quite good. That means we can fight, protect others, and catch criminals. That means we're the good guys. Okay, yeah, we might have to go and do that. Okay, that's very exciting. Okay, but do you know what? I think, I think we've had a very good start to things. We've kind of been introduced back into the Guild 3. And you know what? It's not too dissimilar. It's not too dissimilar to when we last played it. I mean, yeah, there's a few changes we can see inside the buildings and the menus and that are a little bit different. It's a little bit different into how you sort of um, assign people into your house now to get them to do things. It's a little bit more fiddly, I would say, than I remember. But there we go. So we've kind of got back into it, which is all very good. So I think we'll finish up for now. We'll sort of wrap things up for the moment. And then we'll come back again and see how we get on in the next chapter 
of the tale of the biscuits dynasty because of course next time there will be a child or possibly children i don't know maybe two or three might appear i've got no idea but there will be some children the dynasty will continue we'll then start going up the kind of social ladder when we get some more money in we'll get some more skills and we'll see how we get on and also as well we might want to go and just have a little bit of a nosy at some of the other dynasties maybe want to go and see how they're doing or maybe you know try and become friends with them that'd be quite nice if we could work that that would be wonderful but yeah all that is for next time but i'm very happy i'm very happy to be back with the guild three it's wonderful i do like the guild three it's all a bit silly it's a bit daft but you know what it's a lot of fun so here we go we'll finish up for now come back next time see how we get on hopefully you have enjoyed this i hope you've enjoyed our return to the guild three if you have please do leave a like that would be most marvelous indeed and also if you're not already then please do subscribe to keep up today with how we get on here next time out in the guild three but for now thank you very much for joining me in the geek cupboard and i will see you next time Everyone loves barbecued rat. My compliments to the chef. I don't think he did much. He literally stuck a stick up the rat's bottom and put it on a fire. Shrieking weird ladies in the water. Probably not a good thing. The heroes offer a decisive solution to all the woman's riddles. <laughs> By shoving her off the bridge. Yay. Yay for the chiseled stick.